Hi everyone, I'm Mark and welcome to my videos about building better chat fuel chatbots using its JSON API. Today we're going to talk about email validation. So why do we need to do this? So I always think you need a dual channel approach to your marketing with uh, Facebook Messenger bots. Facebook is constantly changing its broadcast messaging rules so you can never guarantee that you can talk to your user after 24 hours. So you need another way to contact them. So normally you'd use a chatbot and you can also use something like an email service provider like MailChimp or ConvertKit, something like that. Um, and we need to check that the user gives us a valid email address. Uh, they might have typed it in incorrectly so we can correct them. Uh, it might not be valid, they might not even give you an email address um, at all. So how do we do that? So today we're going to do a few things. We're going to set up a chat fuel bot using its JSON API. We're going to use glitch.com, which I've used before, to send a request and validate the email that's given to us. We're going to use a Node.js server and we're going to respond with some user attributes telling the user if the email is valid. So we could use regular expressions. Now regular expressions are a sequence of characters which define a search pattern in something that's given to us. However, the email format is quite complicated. Um, you, can, you can find some regular expressions online. Here's an example of a very complicated one for a, a fully compliant email address. Um, so it's tricky, you might mess this up. And, and I, I've done this before, it's a lot more difficult. Now another way to do it, which is what we're going to do today, is to check the domain name server, the DNS records. Now DNS records define how a domain name, such as google.com, maps to a particular server or set of servers by their IP address. The other thing it can do is we can set something called an MX record, which is a mail exchange record. This tells you where to send email to. If there is no MX record, there's no valid email can be sent to that domain. So we're going to use that to check. So let's get started. OK, so if you've seen my videos before, you know I like to use glitch.com for uh, my Node.js servers. And here's one that I've got already, which is called the Chatfield Demo Bot. I'll share the code and the link to it in the description below. So the first thing I'm going to do is use a slash verify path. I'm going to add some verification routes. I'm doing this to avoid putting a lot of code into this single module. We can split it out into different modules. So I've just quickly created this verification module, um, which has got an express router. Um, it's got what we call express middleware there and we're making a get request to slash email so our, our uh, url that we're going to call for this api will be slash verify which is from here and slash email right so the first thing we need to do is we need to get the email address from the request query parameters that we pass through so let's do a const email equals request dot query and this is called destructuring, and we're, re we're receiving the request.query.email parameter and putting it into a variable called email. So the next thing we need to do is we're going to check if it's a valid email address. Has it got an at sign in it? So here we're going to do return, and we're going to make this what's called promise-based. Now you can look up online what promises are. It's just a way of wrapping asynchronous functions because they will happen in the future at some point. And the DNS lookup takes a period of time and it happens in the future. So firstly, we'll do is valid email address. And we'll pass in the email address we've just been given. We'll just do a then function, which means uh, it's, it's after the, uh, the promise has resolved, we call it. We're then going to check if it's find the MX records and see if they exist. If we get to here, then we've got our records. Yeah, we'll call it, I'll just call it MX records, just to be clear. MX records, another function. And then if this is all true, let's return some JSON. So we'll do a uh, response return, sorry, response.json. And if you can remember from my previous videos and uh, how we use chat field, we set attributes. And then we can set an attribute called email valid. And we'll say that's true. So if we've got here, then we know our email is valid. The other thing we're going to do as well, though, is response. The other thing, if I can spell properly, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to add what we call an error handler. So this is catch error. And now if any errors occur in any of our functions above, then we can catch them all in a single place. And then we can do return response.json. Now, the same thing here, we're going to set the attributes. Now, what I like to do in Chat Fuel is I like to put all of my code for messaging and things like that, the whole flow, build that in Chat Fuel. 
And for my APIs, I just set attributes, user attributes in ChatFuel um, and just return them back to ChatFuel so that I can then use it. It means that we don't hard code any messages in here. So we'll do email valid. So it's the same attribute, but in this case, we'll say it's false. Okay. Let's build out these functions. The first thing we want is, is a valid email address. Now we've said we're going to use a promise. So we have to return a promise over to a new promise and it takes two parameters and a function. Okay. So it needs a uh, resolve and a reject parameter. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if this email um, has, we can use a string function called includes and we can say, does it include an at sign? Yeah, if it does, yeah, we can do resolve, resolve. And in this case, we're not actually going to return any data. Otherwise, we know it's wrong. So we can do reject and we'll send an error out here um, saying that this is an invalid email address does not contain at symbol. Okay, great. So the next thing we need to do is we need to find the MX records. Okay, so again, we're going to return a promise, return new promise, um, resolve, reject. There we go. Okay, so we need to find the domain, put these in here, find the domain name from the email. So we can use something, we can use something called uh, the split function. So email.split and at, and what this does is it returns us an array. Okay. And, and the, it's split into two parts, what's before the at sign and what's after the at sign. And the thing that's after the at sign is the domain name that we need. And we can do something clever here um, called destructuring. And we can say, we don't care about the first parameter. So there's nothing there, but we do know that the second parameter is going to be a dom domain. So we're going to use that. The next thing we need to do is check whether there's a DNS record. So for this, we're going to use a Node.js library. So we don't have to install anything here in our package.json. If you've seen it in my previous videos, that's what we do. Instead, we just require the DNS library, DNS, from Node.js. Okay, great. So now we can call this, so dns.resolve.mx, and it takes a domain name. And then it has what we call a callback function. So it does an error or uh, so it either passes back an error or the addresses and the function there. And then there's two things we need to do. We need to check if there was an error that contains e no not found, sorry, that's a not found or e no data. Um, either of those mean that it's invalid. So let's check that first. So we say if has mx record error and we'll call our error function. And if there is an error, we can just do a reject. Yeah, do a new error. And we can say um, email has invalid MX record. So it either doesn't have an MX record or it's invalid. Um, and we can do else. And then we'll just do a resolve. And we'll pass back these addresses just in case we ever needed them. In, a, in our case, we're, we're not going to use them, but we could just pass them back like that. Okay, so that's easy. That's our function. It's going to check whether it's got an MX error record. So the last thing we need to do is just check whether it has the, the error or not. So let's do a return again. So if there's an error and so this is a logical and in JavaScript and most programming languages. Uh, and then we're going to check for two things. Now we're going to say if the error dot code is equal to E not found or and that's called a logical or error dot code is equal to e no data. So if either of those conditions is true, then there is an error and it'll return true. Otherwise it'll return false. And that's it. That should do what we want. So let's test this code now. Let's click on show and glitch and do next to the code. And this opens a little window here. We'll change the URL. So we've defined verify slash email. Yeah, and we're going to pass in a query parameter uh, called email, sorry which is our email address. So let's do test, pass in test. Okay, let's try that there. So the email valid is set to false because hopefully, in fact, let's add an additional error message in here. So the error that's passed through here will have a message. We can say error is error.message. Okay, let's refresh that. There we go. Invalid email address does not contain an app symbol. Great. Okay, so let's do put an app symbol in. And we'll just do test that test. Now we know that's not an invalid email address, but let's try that. 
email has invalid MX record. Great, so it knows that that's not valid. So I think test.com is actually a valid um, domain. So let's try that. Test.com, yeah, the email's valid, true. Um, we have probably hopefully never get that. Well, let's try Gmail. Now, I don't know if you know, but gmail.com is a valid email, uh, email domain. Yeah, email valid, true. However, if someone sent it to us from .co.uk, which is like a UK domain name, so if you're in uh, the UK, here, while it does exist as a, a domain name, gmail.co.uk, it doesn't actually resolve as an MX record, so we can see that the email has invalid MX record. So now we should have something which validates the email addresses passed to us. So let's test this out in ChatFuel and build a flow around this API. Okay, so here I am in ChatFuel now, and this is linked to my uh, my ChatFuel demo bot, which is just a page I've got for testing things out. And I've built this little group here called Email Verification. Uh, I've built out a few different blocks here. Um, the first one is called email.ask. So this is where we're going to ask the user for the email address. So I've, I've added a save user email um, block here, which says, please share your email address. Um, this is the, the one that you can ask, um, and Facebook will fill it in with the email address, but sometimes your user might manually type it. So we're going to put this in here, um, and we're going to ask for their email address, and it will get filled into a user attribute called email address. We're then going to call the API that we've just set up. We're going to make a GET request using the JSON API to our chat field demo box.glitch.me. We're going to check the verify email path, and we're going to pass in the email we've just got. Now here's where we get clever. So we're going to use our redirector block. So in here, we're going to check for an email attribute. And if you remember, we set something called email valid. Okay. So if email valid is true, let me just show you that. Uh, there, there we go. So we've got email valid. So if it's true, we know it's a valid email address, okay? Right, so email valid. If it's true, then we're gonna to go to the email valid block. So we'll create that there. If not, for any other case where this isn't true, we just fall back to send the emails invalid. So let's have a look at email valid. So I've created a block here. And it should just say, yeah, thank you, your email address is, is valid. And here's where you could carry on and you could put that into your um, into your mail provider, MailChimp or whatever. Um, however, if the email is invalid, we can sort of tell them and say, oh, you know, you may have typed it in incorrectly. Here's a little text message here that we give them. And then just give them the option to, to you know, give it to us again. We go back to the ask block. If not, we just go to email, uh, email finished. And we just say, okay, sorry. We'll leave you alone. You obviously don't want to give us the email address. That's fine. But this is a way that you could gate some area. This is what I do with my JSON guide. If you don't give me an email address, I don't give you the guide. Um, so let's test this out then. I'll add a link to our email ask here. Um, like that. And then we can test it in Messenger. So you can see there, it's giving me my email address. However, I'm just going to put a test email address thing and say test. Oh, I think your email address test is invalid. Do you want to try it again? Yeah, okay. Let's try uh, so let's try mark at gmail.co.uk. And you remember I said that this is actually an invalid uh, domain. So let's try that now. Oh no, I think email address mark at gmail.co.uk is invalid. Do you want to try it again? Yes. Let's put in mark at mark littlemore.com, which I know is valid. Thank you, email address is valid. That's great, it works. Now we can validate email addresses within our ChatFuel chatbot. I hope this video was helpful. If you want to learn more about ChatFuel and the JSON API, I've got a free guide that you can download. I'll put the link down below now and in the description. Click on it and get your free guide completely free and lots of useful information about JSON and the API. Right, see you next time.